Elon Musk lost his claim as having the most powerful space-worthy rocket when NASA blasted its own mega rocket to the moon in November. But the SpaceX founder could win back the title with his company's next big project. Starship, SpaceX's skyscraping rocket and spacecraft, will launch on its first mission soon. As Musk just confirmed, we will attempt a Starship launch next month. In today's episode of Great SpaceX, we're going to go over every little detail in the announcement that Elon Musk made, so stay tuned. Musk said on Saturday that SpaceX was planning to attempt to launch its reusable Starship rocket into orbit in March if remaining tests go well. The SpaceX CEO's comment came in response to a Twitter user asking if Starship was almost ready for launch. SpaceX aims to demonstrate with the launch that Starship can carry crew on missions with NASA to Earth orbit, the Moon, Mars, and beyond, its website states. While the date of Starship's orbital test flight has been a moving target for much of the past year and a half, there's reason to believe next month could see the rocket finally fly. In January, Starship successfully completed its first ever stacked fueling test. The wet dress rehearsal saw SpaceX load both stages of the vehicle with more than 10 million pounds of liquid oxygen and methane fuel. Critically, the company also ran through some of the countdown procedures it will need to complete on launch day. There are some notable upgrades to the orbital launch mount, two valves installed, and preparation is underway for the next 33 Raptor engine static fire test. So far, we had possible closures all week, starting today, Monday, February 6th, to Friday, February 10th. At that point, SpaceX will attempt to simultaneously ignite all 33 of the Raptor engines installed on Super Heavy B7, almost certainly making it the most powerful liquid rocket ever tested. Even if all 33 engines never reach more than 60% of their maximum thrust of 230 tons, which is equivalent to 510,000 pounds of force, they will likely break the Soviet N-1 wreck rocket's record of 4,500 tons of thrust, which is around 10 million pounds at sea level. It'd almost be the most rocket engines ever simultaneously ignited on one vehicle. If that milestone is completed without significant issue, there's a chance that SpaceX could move directly into preparations for Starship's first orbital launch attempt as Musk planned. In the likelier scenario that some issues arise and some repairs are required, the path would be more circuitous but should still end in an orbital launch attempt late this summer. In another situation, the SpaceX team is in a rush to install the water system for the launch pad. Last weekend, we saw four tanks arriving at the Starbase. Those are the same four tanks transported before using the Marmac 2680 barge. However, we weren't sure about the use of these four. Perhaps they'll be used to provide water and add some big pumps for the future water deluge system. By the way, this is all thanks to Lab Padre for the live coverage. My guess is that they'll do the 33 engine static fire first and decide based on how badly that damages the pad. One thing SpaceX could do is conduct the first 33 engine static fire at the lowest stable throttle setting. If Super Heavy is fully fueled, that could have the added benefit of reducing net thrust to around zero, limiting stress to the OLM. Given how cautious they've been so far, my money's on the first 33 engine test being a half thrust static fire. SpaceX might even pull a Falcon Heavy and lower liftoff thrust as much as possible so the first full thrust test only happens in flight. Who knows? Only time will tell. Even if it fails, Musk is always excited about the upcoming flight. Success is far from certain, but excitement is guaranteed. During that flight test, the colossal booster will separate about three minutes after liftoff and land in the Gulf of Mexico, according to federal filings. The ship will fly in space around Earth at an altitude of over 150 miles, then splash down off the Hawaiian coast. This will be a crucial demonstration of hardware NASA is depending on to get humans back on the moon in the next few years. And if successful, it'll mean Musk is one small step closer to realizing his personal dream of building a city on Mars. In other interesting news, the US military just shot down a Chinese surveillance balloon. 
Specifically, an F-22 fighter jet destroyed the Chinese balloon on Saturday, February 4th, with a sidewinder missile, taking it out with a single shot, U.S. military officials said. The uncrewed airship was over the Atlantic Ocean at that time, just off the coast of South Carolina. It was flying at an altitude of 60,000 to 65,000 feet, or 18,300 to 19,800 meters, while the F-22 was at about 58,000 feet, or 17,700 meters, the U.S. Department of Defense wrote in an update on Saturday. This is in the lower stratosphere but above protected airspace for commercial airliners. Even though it is above commercial airspace, the United States still considers this region of the atmosphere above its borders to be sovereign airspace far below outer space, which begins at 320,000 feet or 100 kilometers, and does not belong to any one nation. According to a statement from a Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson on Friday, flying the balloon over the United States was an accident. It's a civilian airship used for research, mainly meteorological, purposes. Affected by the westerlies and with limited self-steering capability, the airship deviated far from its planned course. The Chinese side regrets the unintended entry of the airship into U.S. airspace due to force majeure, the statement said. The true purpose of the balloon, be it this or something else, is not presently known. But again, given its large size, the balloon likely was not being used to gather meteorological data. The obvious and probably correct answer is spying. China, of course, has excellent observation satellites in low Earth orbit, just like the United States. However, Andrew Antonio, a stratospheric balloon expert whose company Urban Sky is developing the world's first reusable stratospheric balloons for remote sensing, confirmed stratospheric balloons have some key advantages. By raising and lowering itself into the atmosphere, a stratospheric balloon can maintain its position over an area for hours, days, or even weeks. This provides higher resolution imagery with a persistence that satellites cannot match, and at a far lower price at that. Urban Sky, for example, is developing small stratospheric balloons that can be used to monitor the progress of wildfires and efforts to contain them. So did the Chinese actually launch this balloon to spy on the United States directly? Probably not. The Chinese would have known that sending a clearly observable balloon into the US heartland would be a provocative action and they are unlikely to have done so on purpose. The most likely scenario, Antonio believes, is that the termination mechanism, which is used to bring down a balloon at the end of its desired flight time, failed. Typically, a stratospheric balloon will have one or more backup termination mechanisms, but a technical problem would explain why a balloon launched in China days or weeks ago could have eventually drifted into the United States. The Chinese government may not want to admit this technical failure publicly. However, the prevailing currents in the stratosphere would appear to support this theory of a drifting balloon that the Chinese government had lost control of. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX, and as always, if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, my team and I will see you next time.